Hello everyone. Well, it's been a while since my last pedigree video, or my only pedigree video. I spoke about Tiz De Law and his prospects for going longer, and he proved it in the Florida Derby last week. He won at 9 furlongs. Now I'm going to talk about Charlatan. And a lot of people worry about Charlatan because his sire is Spitestown. And that is a concern. Uh, Spitestown was a sprinter in his career, and he's mostly known as a sprinter miler sire. Maybe he could get like a middle distance horse that could get up to maybe a mile 116th, but I don't think it's a huge deal, as at least not as much as people think. And I'm going to talk about Spice Down for a little bit. First of all, we have his tab in Equibase open, so let's take a look at Spice Town's record first, just to get an, an overall feel for what he did in his career in case you weren't following Spice Town back then. He raced around 2003, 2004. And you can see here, a lot of these sprint stakes are sprint races. If you know horse racing, uh, you know the Amsterdam stakes is a sprint race for three-year-olds. He finished second in that race. Uh, you know, Artax was a sprinter, so I'm going to assume the Artax handicap was a sprint race. Uh, he won that race. Churchill Downs handicap in 2004, uh, that's a sprint race, and he won that race. Uh, the True North Breeders' Cup handicap. That's a sprint race. Uh, he won that race at Belmont Park in 2004 as well. Uh, the Alfred G. Vanderbilt Handicap, that's another popular sprint race at Saratoga. And he won that race. And the Vosburgh and Breeders' Cup Sprint, of course, are both sprint races. So, Spice Town was a sprinter in his career. There's no getting around that. But, I will say, but other sires before him have had sprinter miler careers and went on to sire long distance routers and Kentucky Derby winners and two examples of that are elusive quality and distorted humor. It depends on the mirror that they're paired to. Uh, you pair elusive quality or distorted humor to a routing mirror and you'll probably get a router. From what I've read somewhere it's it's that the stamina comes from the damn side. I don't remember where I read that, so I don't think the fact that Spitestown was a sprinter in his career disqualifies him from getting a 10 for a long horse. That's the main point. Spitestown actually has some routing in him. If you, I mean, he has some route blood in him. If you look at his siblings, a silken cat also produced a horse called Irat. Now. If anyone is watching this and has been following racing in the past few years, you'll know I rap. Uh, he was on the Derby Trail. He actually competed in the Kentucky Derby. He didn't do well, but he did win some races afterwards. And we're going to assume that you don't know I rap. We're going to look at his record really quick uh, just to get a quick idea of what he did after the Kentucky Derby. Because I can cross the Kentucky Derby out. Oh, well, actually. He won a 9 for long race before the Kentucky Derby, so on the bluegrass stakes. And the Kentucky Derby, as I said, is an outlier for many horses, so we're not even going to count that. I rap won the Ohio Derby after that, and the Ohio Derby is typically 9 for longs, so we're just going to check really quick that it was 9 for longs. Yes, it was. He won by nose over Gervin. And as I said, he won the Indiana Derby. He finished third in the Travers, and then he finished second in the Pennsylvania Derby and unfortunately a rap got injured in this race. He never ran again and I'm not sure if he made it after this race, but we're just gonna look at the chart really quick. Uh, he lost by seven and a quarter lengths to West Coast. You can't say that I rap was in a router earlier in his career. He also finished runner up in the Los Alamitos Futurity. So he was a router. He was a two turn router in his career. I'm going to say that Spitestown has a little bit of route blood in him because of Silken Cat. And I, I know that Spitestown was a sprinter miler and that his sire gone west is different than Tiz now, but still. Um, Silken Cat is a good sign. And back to my first point anyway, as I said, a sprinter miler sire is not disqualified from siring a 9-10 for long horse. Uh, the notion that one can't do that is completely false. But we're gonna go look at the damn side and 
The rule is if the sire is a short-winded type, uh, if that kind of sire is paired with a routing dam, one who has a lot of stamina, then the horse is probably going to be an okay router. So we're going to look at authenticity. And authenticity, we don't even need to look beyond authenticity, but we might do it anyway. Uh, just to get the full picture because authenticity was actually a successful horse in her career let's see well let's go back to dam's full search on equibase and you can see your three fulls here ignore the two ones uh, in the first two slots because that's a different authenticity from australia uh, the three names below are authenticities only three fulls and you can see Charlatan in the middle. Uh, Betty from the Bronx is an unraced two-year-old colt by Tappet, and Haneli Moon is the older sister of Charlatan and Betty from the Bronx. So we're gonna look at authentic Authenticity's record really quick. Just to get an idea of what she did in her career. This was the daughter of Quiet American, and she was very successful. She won 883,000 with only four wins out of 12 starts, so one or two of those wins must have been important. We're gonna go down here, back to her maiden special weight win back in June 2011. Okay, she broke her maiden in a mile and 116th race on dirt, so she broke her maiden in a two turn route. Let's go up to her next win in February 2013 at Gulfstream Park. We'll see how long this race is. Okay, authenticity. One by 17 and a half lengths. Wow, that is incredible. Okay, let's go up and look at our next win, which came in the Latrion. Now, most people know the Latrion. It's either it's either a mile one sixteenth or a mile one eighth. It might it might have been different distances depending on the year, but we're gonna click on this anyway to see what it was in 2004. Okay, you can see here the 2013 Latrion was a mile and one sixteenth. So, okay, so it was a two turn route at Churchill Downs in 2013 and she won by head over on Fire Baby. Moving forward to her last win, uh, she won a 2013 Shuby Handicap in July later that year. Yeah, this one was nine furlongs at Saratoga out of all places and she won this race by length after uh, pressing the pace. So, Authenticity won up to 9 furlongs in her career, and you can also see that she finished runner-up in the personal instant. Authenticity was a two-turn router. All of, her, all of her wins came around two turns, and that's a very good sign. We could stop the video right there and, and say Spitestown was paired to Authenticity, who was a router, but we'll take a look down the line, down the damn line, just a little bit. If you take a look at who else Court of Appeal produced, uh, she also produced one other six-figure earner named Braille's Appeal. Uh, Braille's Appeal won three of nine starts. Uh, she won 216000 in her career. So she was fairly successful. And let's take a look at some of her wins. March 2018 and April 2018 at Fairgrounds in Keeneland. Let's look at the fairgrounds race first. This was a five and a half furlong turf race. She won by five and a half legs. Okay, so this might be a turf sprinter. And the fourth start, which she also won, was another five and a half furlong turf race. And if you go up in her record, she also competed in the Kentucky Downs Lady Sprint, uh, the Buffalo Trace Franklin County Stakes at Keeneland, which is another sprint race, which, which I don't even need to look up to remember. Although she ran 12th in that race, so she didn't run well. But okay, I'll admit that Authenticity is a half-sister to a sprinter in Braille's Appeal, which is kind of strange because Braille's Appeal is sired by English Channel, and you don't associate English Channel with turf sprinters, you associate him with routers, turf routers. We're going to go back just a little bit, and we're going to take a look at Court of Appeal siblings. So we're going to take a look at Appealing Missy's progeny. Court of Appeal is right here. 
and she never raced, but she was a half sibling to two six figure earners in Statement and Wild Appeal. And we're just gonna look at Statement really quick. We'll go to Dan's full search. And let's take a look at Statement because he was the most successful one out of this group. He won 374,000. And his sire was Seattle Slough. You can see here he finished fifth in the Maker's Mark Miles Stakes. Uh, what kind of allowance race did he win in August 2003? We'll take a look at that. And this was a nine for long turf race at Saratoga. Statement won by a neck. So, I don't even know if I need to look any further because that's a very good sign. All right. Well, anyways, a statement won at nine furlongs in Saratoga, which is enough evidence for me to, to consider him a decent two-turn turf router. I don't know. We could look at Wild Appeal really quick, too, just to see what he did. Oh, I was already on that page. All right, let's look at Wild Appeal. He did win six figures, although he wasn't as successful as statement. This might have been a claimer based on the number of starts that I see. Yeah, he was a claimer. Let's just click on one of his races just to see what kind of races he competed in, even though it was Mountaineer. Six for Long Thunder. Okay, well, the thing about claimers is that it's really harder to analyze their careers because basically they just compete anywhere. Uh, the, the trainers don't pay as much attention to what the uh, ideal distance for the, the horses because they're claimers. You, you just run them when you can. Uh, so it, it's it's harder to get a grasp on what claimers prefer to do because trainers are more likely to just run them if they see an opportunity. I know Wild Appeal was a sprinter, but I'm not going to hold it against uh, Charlatan's pedigree. I'm going to say that the damn the damn line of Charlton is solid in terms of routing pedigree. But look, Authenticity was a router. She won up to nine furlongs. Uh, Court Appeal is a half sibling to Statement, who won up to nine furlongs at Saratoga. I think that's enough evidence. Yeah, Quiet American up here too, over Court of Appeal. And if you look at, we'll look at Quiet American's career really quick. You know, it's really more about what the horse can produce rather than what the horse's race record was. But I just want to refresh my memory on what Quiet American did. And he won, he won four of 12 starts as well, 754,000. And he won the NYRA Mile Handicap, which is now called the Cigar Mile. And he also won the San Diego Handicap at a mile and 1 16th. And he also won an allowance race two allowance races at Hollywood Park in Santa Anita. Uh, he finished second in the Stroop Stakes at nine furlongs and second in the Woodward Stakes at nine furlongs. So I think there's enough route blood underneath in Charlton's pedigree that stretching out to at least nine furlongs shouldn't be a problem. And I don't even think 10 furlongs will be a problem based on how he ran. The rule is, in terms of pedigree, uh, uh, the rule is in, in terms of handicapping distance limitations is that the more a horse runs, the less pedigree matters. This goes for surface switches too. Uh, you really want to base your handicapping on what's there on paper if you can, uh, if the horse has tried the conditions of the race before. If the horse hasn't tried the surface or if the horse hasn't tried the distance, okay, then you have to look at pedigree or if the horse is making his first career start. But if the horse has tried to go two turns already, or if the horse has tried a specific distance, you really have to forget pedigree and just base your handicapping on what the horse has done and how he looks on the track. And Charlatan looked amazing in his two turn debut at Santa Anita. Uh, he looked like a star and we're just going to watch the replay really quick. You can see he's on the lead and Graydon Van Dyke is on him. And Graydon Van Dyke, uh, he didn't even need to do anything in this race. He could have just sat on Charlatan and just coasted the wire easily. But you're going to see in a few moments that Graydon actually asks him for some run. And I don't know why. I think 
I think Raiden was just trying to experiment and see what would happen if he asked the charlatan for more. Gave him a light tap with a whip. And look at him right now. That was a tap. It might have been more than a tap, but still. Look at charlatan explode. He is drawing clear in his route debut. Look at him. It looks like Raiden is just holding on to charlatan. He just exploded from that field like they were nothing. And remember, that was his two-turn debut. Um, he exploded also in his sprint debut, in his career debut, when he won. And the question was whether he could stretch out. And I know it was just a one-mile race. But still, it was two turns. And he finished so strongly. We could watch it again. It was so impressive. Look at the moment that Traded asked him right now. He didn't need to do that. He could have just easily coasted to the wire, but he just wanted to see what he would do, what Charlatan would do, and what Charlatan did was uh, amazing. And you think about the fact that Charlatan ran faster uh, than CC in the Beholder Mile for older Philly Samaras one race later at the same distance. I, I think he ran over a second faster than CC, so I think Charlatan could get at least up to 9 for long just fine. And I have little concern that he could get 10 for longs as well. He has until September this year because of the virus situation. Um, the Kentucky Derby is in September. And if he tries the Traverse Stakes, well, that's in August too. So if I was bad for it, I would hold off on trying uh, Charlton in any 10 for long races until then. I would not, I would not attempt the Belmont Stakes if it's still running in June. I would just stick to nine for long races in like the Arkansas Derby, the Haskell Stakes, and just gradually get him up there to 10 for longs. Even though I think it'll be no problem, I don't see any problems based on how he ran right there. And even if you discount how powerful he looked in the stretch run, um, as I said, he's a son of authenticity who was a router in her career and she won up to nine furlongs. As long as Spice Down is paired with a routing dam like authenticity, I don't think nine or ten furlongs will be a problem. I think Charlatan could become a superstar at routing distances. We'll see. I mean, it's very early in his career and the Kentucky Derby is months away. But those are my thoughts on Charlatan. I think he could become a superstar at longer distances. And he reminds me so much of Justify, who had no problems uh, winning the Triple Crown. So Charlatan has a chance to become a star. Um, right now, I wouldn't rank him ahead of Tiz de Law because Tiz de Law has more accomplishments. Once he starts competing in stakes races, could change my mind and he could become my number one horse. We'll see. But I don't think 9 furlongs or 10 furlongs will be a problem. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Charlatan and his prospects for going longer. Thanks for watching my Tiz de Law video and hopefully this will get 700 views as well. If you want to follow my Twitter, it's, it's down below this video. Uh, if you want to support me, uh, doing these videos does take up time, so you can donate to my PayPal. What else? Uh, if you want to contact me about anything, my email is also below this video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.